Dr. Paul Mason, How to Avoid Damaged or Oxidized LDL, and How to Measure It. Now, there are some things that we know that increase oxidative stress, and that's seed oils and too much sugar or too much carbohydrates. So we know that when the blood sugar levels are going up and down, we've got very good evidence that that generates oxidative stress. That generates these reactive oxygen species or these uh, electrons with an unbalanced valence shell electron that can actually damage other tissues. So you don't want your sugar to be going up and down every other moment. And the other thing is seed oils, by definition, they've got bonds that are prone to oxidation. And when you consume them, these oxidation products actually literally get taken up by these other particles called chylomicrons and get delivered to the liver. And we've got evidence, we can see this on electron microscopy, where these oxidized particles actually lead to damage of the liver, insulin resistance, and they actually then through a whole series of downstream events lead to your triglycerides going up and your HDL going down. So if you're worried about your LDL level, don't worry about saturated fat because saturated fat will make your LDL go high. Sure, it can do that, but it won't make it go bad. What will make your LDL go bad is having very unstable glucose levels and consuming a lot of oxidized seed oil. You can actually measure LDL directly. So, and that's very easy. So when the LDL gets oxidized, these little surface proteins actually denature. They actually shrink. They change their structure. So if you damage an LDL particle, there's a tiny, tiny fractional shrinkage of it. And this is what we call small dense LDL. I'm sure you've heard the term. Now, this is actually a terrible term because we have people talking about these large fluffy molecules and small dense particles as if there's a significant size difference between them. It's infinitesimally small. It's a tiny size difference, but it is measurable. We can actually measure it. Japanese scientists way back in the 90s, they've actually figured out that when you actually have sugar, binding to the LDL particle that denatures these proteins and lead to a shrinkage. We've actually got evidence that glycation damage as well as oxidation damage leads to small, dense LDL. Now, we can put a sample of your LDL into a gel and we can either centrifuge it, so spin it down, or we can apply a current through it, so-called lipid electrophoresis. And both of those measures reliably separate out the LDL based on the density, the size of it. And we can actually then see how many different LDL populations you have. Normally, you should only have one smooth peak, and that's, uh, that's basically healthy LDL, physiological LDL. That's not going to harm you, not in 100 years. That, that's good LDL. But if you start having it damaged, then you'll see more peaks. So the first step is you'll get a second peak. And my clinical experience is that when I correlate people with two peaks, with something called a coronary artery calcium score, which is a direct measure of calcification inside the vessels that correlates very tightly with heart disease, that having a second peak doesn't seem to be overly problematic, but it's obviously not ideal. But once you start getting three peaks or four peaks or five peaks, then all bets are off. Then we start seeing significant uh, atherosclerotic burden. If we have a look at triglyceride and HDL, though, we know there's this association with oxidative stress. And we've got very reliable associational data. It's not as good as directly measuring it, but we can infer with a high degree of reliability whether somebody has good or bad LDL simply by having a look at the ratio. And we do something called a triglyceride to HDL ratio. We divide the triglycerides by the amount of HDL. And I've actually got a couple of lectures online where I talk about this and talk about what thresholds are generally associated with what we call a pattern A. LDL pattern or a non-oxidized LDL. According to Ben Bickman, if your triglyceride to HDL ratio is less than 1.5, you are doing well. Things that increase oxidative stress include eating seed oils, which are vegetable oils from seeds, too much sugar, too much carbohydrates. When blood sugar levels go up and down, that generates oxidative stress. It generates reactive oxygen species, which are electrons with an unbalanced valence shell electron. 
that damages other tissues. Seed oils generate oxidative stress. They have bonds that are prone to oxidation and are taken up by chylomicrons and delivered to the liver. This leads to damage to the liver, insulin resistance, triglycerides going up, HDL going down. If you are worried about LDL, don't worry about eating saturated fat. It may make your LDL go up, but it will not make it go bad. What will make your LDL go bad? Having unstable glucose levels and consuming oxidized seed oils. To measure LDL quality directly, when LDL is oxidized, the surface proteins are denatured. So the LDL particle has a tiny shrinkage and is called a small dense LDL. Japanese scientists in the 1990s discovered that when sugar binds to the LDL particle, it denatures these proteins, and this leads to the shrinkage of the LDL. Glycation and oxidation damage leads to small dense LDL. To measure LDL quality directly, we can put a sample of your LDL into a gel and either spin it in a centrifuge or put it through lipid electrophoresis to separate the LDL by density. We can then see how many LDL populations you have. If you have one peak, that's perfectly normal, perfectly healthy. More than one peak means you have damaged LDL. Dr. Mason says, in my clinic, if a patient has two peaks, this is correlated with coronary arterial calcium score, and it's not too problematic, but more than two peaks, we see significant atherosclerotic burden. There is an association between triglycerides and HDL and oxidative stress. And you can tell if someone has good or bad LDL. You can use the triglyceride to HDL ratio. And Dr. Mason reminds us, I have videos on this measurement in my YouTube channel. The title of his YouTube channel is Paul Mason.